All right, so today we'll be changing out the air conditioning liquid line, which is this one here, on a 2018 Jeep Renegade. All right, so this is what the uh, new AC uh, liquid line is going to look like. And it's about 350 uh, off of Amazon eBay. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to have to evacuate the system. This should be done by a professional to take out your uh, refrigerant from the uh, AC lines. That's your R134A, and uh, that should be done professionally because it is illegal just to let it go up in the atmosphere. All right, so now that you've uh, evacuated your system and got all your refrigerant out of the uh, AC line, we can go ahead and remove your air box and your cold air intake. Now, right directly behind the cold air intake is where your first connection is going to be for your AC line. And the second one is gonna be on your condenser, which is gonna be right behind the grill and in front of the radiator. So it's gonna be sitting right about here. All right, so the first thing I always do is just as a precaution, let's go ahead and just disconnect the one battery cable. It's super easy to do. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push in on the tab right here and you pull it straight up. And that's how easy it is. This actually is a really cool idea made by uh, Mopar. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and disconnect this. You're gonna take and uh, pinch the two tabs together. And then once you do that, you pull straight out. So what I'm talking about is right here. All right, so the next thing we're doing is we're gonna take the electrical connection off your mass airflow sensor. So what you're doing is there's a gray tab on the back side here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull straight out on it till it clicks. You don't wanna go too hard because uh, you do not wanna break this. And then what happens, you push in just like that. You push in, pull straight out. So that connection point right there, you just have to pull this straight back and then you're going to push in on it right here. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is uh, take a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew this uh, screw and this one right over here and then this one right here. And then once that's up, you can go ahead and lift this up um, good time to uh, change out your air filter. So go ahead and pull that out. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is take off this electrical connection right here. So go ahead and push straight down and pull straight back. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is remove this. This is an eight millimeter. Uh, evidently this already was off. It wasn't really connected, but you do wanna remove this uh, bolt that's holding this down. Um, there's a keeper that holds uh, this. I'll show it to you in a minute. But let's go ahead and uh, remove that with an 8 millimeter. So the uh, reason why this was already disconnected, the grommet itself was completely blown apart. This is, it should be one piece here. And what happens is it, uh, it sits like that. And then it actually pops down in to this plastic retainer and then the bolt slides down through this to hold it in place. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take off this banding clamp that's right down there. You just uh, loosen it up and that's going to be a seven millimeter. It's right there and it hold, holds the uh, cold air intake on and once you get that loose you can go ahead and wiggle it and just take the thing right off. All right, this is the band that I was just talking about that you have to loosen with a seven millimeter. All right, so there is your cold air intake. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the cold air intake, uh, the box itself, we're gonna pull it straight up like that, it pops out. So you wanna pop it out on the one side and then it pulls out this way from the back here. So there's two points in the back. So if you notice, there's the two points and there's the two grommets. There's one there and one there. And then you've got this one right here that you're pulling up on. So there's three points that you gotta pull. So pull up the, the front of it first and then pull a straight back on it. 
Now you do have one other connection point right here that you just need to take off. And instead of cutting it, you can just go ahead and stick a screwdriver down between this and then it'll pop this right off. All right, so your uh, liquid line on your AC will go down if you follow it. It goes down underneath the uh, air conditioning suction line, which is right here, it's the bigger uh, tube. And then there's a connection point right over here that you're gonna have to disconnect. And actually they send you, which this is the new one, uh, they send you a brand new bracket. So go ahead and replace the entire bracket. And then if you follow the line back, it goes straight down and you're looking at the one on the bottom, not this one. You want the one on the bottom, which is right way down there. And it's that bottom one, the black line. So this black line right down here, this one, you're gonna take off this bolt here. It's a 10 millimeter. All right, so when you're uh, taking off the um, connection point here, what you're gonna do is you're, you might have to get behind here with like a small screwdriver and then just uh, lightly pry on it because it does have O-rings that hold it in. And so you just have to kind of wiggle it back and forth and then pry a little bit from behind there. It will come off though. All right, so this is what it looks like when you take it out. Uh, this is your, there's these two O-rings right there and that's what's holding a little bit of pressure on it. So just taking a little screwdriver down behind here and just lightly add pressure, it'll pop right out. Go ahead and work on this section here. So we're gonna replace the whole entire bracket. And also too, when, you, um, when you're pulling this out, you know, don't be afraid to put a little bit of pressure on it and pull outward because this will slide up. So the whole plastic uh, tube will slide up through this area here. You do not need to take off your um, motor mount here. And the other thing is, if you think that you're going to uh, mess it up where you don't remember where to put it, go ahead and take some pictures before you actually remove that line. All right, so this is how it's gonna look here once you pull it up through. And then uh, the other thing too is uh, if you do not want to go, if you don't want to disconnect all this, you can just go ahead and uh, disconnect it from the lower section. You know, I know it's kind of more of a hassle, but you have it, it's there, and it comes with the, uh, you know, the new line, so you might as well replace it. Now, the other thing too is when you're, when you're opening these up, what you're gonna do is you're pulling down on the lower tab here, and a lot of times they break because they get old, and then when you pull down on it, it releases pressure and this pushes up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down underneath, in between, right here, and then you're gonna pry it down, and then as you pry down, it just pops open, and that's how you disconnect uh, these clamps. All right, so the connection point is right here and this bolt that is um, holding this on, there's a nut that's sucked down on there. It is a 10 millimeter. So let's go ahead and pull that off if you're replacing this whole bracket. All right, so now that's out, we can just go ahead and remove it. So that's what it looks like right there. All right, so showing you on the new one here, you have an electrical connection that you do need to take off. I'll show you that here in just a second. And then this part here that actually hooks to the condenser uh, just hooks in the same way as the other end that goes to the firewall. What you're gonna do is just take out the same bolt, uh, bolt or nut, and then it's gonna pry off and pull off. Now, I'll show you an easier way to get to this all right, so one of the easiest ways to do this that I've found in the past is to pull out your grill insert. So this one piece right here, you just go ahead and pop that out. It's pretty simple to do. And uh, if you don't, it's super hard to get to laying underneath the car and stuff. It's not impossible, but you can do it. This is the easiest way. And here's where the connection point is right here. All right, so this one actually uh, was broken. So if you see the line that's hanging down right there, uh, that actually, it got um, 
severed at one point or another, so uh, that's why we're replacing this line. All right, so now that it's disconnected down off the uh, condenser, let's go ahead and pull the pull the line up a little bit because we have to do the electrical disconnection point, and it is right here. So we can go ahead and slide this out a little bit. Now remember the way that it goes in because you wanna reroute it the same way. All right, so this electrical connection, now that we can get out a little bit better, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take and there's a little red tab here. Again, you need to push this up. Don't use too much force or you will break it. So what you're gonna do you're just going to push upward. Sometimes these things are a little stubborn. Okay, just like I said just a minute ago, um, that red tab that was there, it did break on me. So what you have to do, and that's why I say you have to use very little force on here and so what you're going to do is you're just going to push it upward and then um, when you push this part of it up then you can push down and it releases however on this particular one the uh the actual red tab broke off nothing you can do about it you just got to kind of push on it still will lock in place without this it just makes it a little more difficult So normally what you're going to do is you will take this uh, electrical connection off while it's down in the engine bay. Um, and so that's why I wanted to kind of show you up here how you take and you push this tab up, the red tab, the one that broke on me. Um, but now it's easier to get out because what you do is you take an awl, you take an awl right here, and you just go down from behind the electrical connector right here. And then what you're going to do, so it's right on the back side of this. And so what you're going to do is you're just going to take and push down on the red. And then it pops it directly out. And then you can push down and pull the electrical connection off, just like that. All right, so now is a great time just to lay them side by side, make sure they are the correct... Um, it's the correct part that you just purchased and then once you are satisfied with it and then let's go ahead and start installing all right so before uh, reinstalling this what you want to do is you want to coat the uh, o-rings uh, with a uh, sealant the stuff i do recommend is the nylog blue or you can use if you don't have that you can use the dielectric grease uh, or silicone grease All right, so now um, we're going to start rerouting this. Uh, and what we're going to do, too, is keep the ends on. Do not take these off. Do not coat them quite yet. Um, you just want to make sure that you have the stuff available so you can uh, coat it before installation. Now, um, the reason why we're going to keep this on, there's a lot of debris. There's dirt and stuff. So as you start feeding it through and, and routing it in the right direction, uh, it will pick up dirt. You do not want to contaminate the lines on the inside and um, you know, then your uh, system won't work correctly. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the uh, condenser side. So we're gonna go ahead and feed this in first since it's uh, more, you have to kind of snake it down in to the, uh, the bumper and stuff. So we're gonna start with that end first. All right, so there was also, uh, these, this was actually disconnected and that's why I was, so there's a, um, that bracket right there is also part of the uh, liquid line. So as you were taking it out, uh, this was actually, the one that was in here was disconnected already. I did not see that. So there's one here and then there's one that actually is in front. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So we wanna go ahead and pull that out because you do have a new one that's on here that is gonna pop right down into place. All right, so there's another one right up on that corner, right up here. And um, you just go ahead and take that out because you have a new one. I apologize, I did not see that. That should have been uh, 
part of the very beginning when we were taking out the um, the liquid line. Okay, so now that you got it all routed down to the condenser and nothing is hooked up yet, do not uh, install anything yet because we're gonna have to move it around a little bit. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and feed in the back of the line first because you have to go under uh, the purge valve and all that. This is where your, um, your gas line feeds in right here. And there's a purge valve and stuff. You have to go down under that. So go ahead and feed that in first and get that down behind here. And then once that's in place, back down there, then we can go ahead now that's sitting down low and then we can go ahead and just slide this down underneath the uh, uh, suction tube just like that all right so now we're going to make our first connection so we're going to get out our nylog blue or the sealant that you're going to use we're going to go ahead and pop off the cap and then we're just going to coat the o-rings right here and then go ahead and install it down into the fitting right there and go ahead and push it back till it seats up against the plastic and then go ahead and put your nut back on and then go ahead and tighten that down all right so don't forget to uh, coat your o-rings before you slide this in place and um, once you do that it slides in pretty easy and then put your nut on there and get it good and tight all right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put the uh, bracket into place back here. And uh, you're gonna pull up on the uh, uh, your suction line and then go ahead and install the uh, bracket onto the stud that's sticking out here. And then we'll go ahead and fit this back into uh, the proper uh, holding spot. Okay, also remember too that it uh, it's actually the second stud down, not the first one. And so go ahead and um, just slide it in place and then put your nut on there and go ahead and cinch that down. And then we can go ahead and uh, lock the suction line into place. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, make this connection right down here. So go ahead and pop this on. like that so the uh, the way these things work when you slide them onto the frame there's a bolt that sticks out and has your threads on it uh, a lot of times they just slide right over the top and they'll actually lock in place if it doesn't you can go ahead and pull this back so that you just pull it back a little ways and then these little teeth inside this grab onto the uh, threads and lock in place so then if you stick it on there you can take and push this in and it locks right over the top of the threads okay so now what we're going to do is make sure that this is on the outside of your wires here you're going to run it up and then go ahead and make this connection up top and then we're going to go ahead and reconnect your electric fitting. So once you slide over the top of that, that little red tab, if it's not broken like mine, um, you just take and push the tab back down to lock it in place so it won't come off. All right, so you wanna go ahead and make that uh, upper connection that's uh, way up on the, uh, up in the corner there. So go ahead and make that connection to the frame, do the same thing with that, uh, that plug well, you just slide it on there, lock it in the place, and then we will focus on making this connection here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and take your cap off, and then uh, we're gonna put your uh, sealant on here, and then we're just gonna make this connection right here, and then get that bolted in. All right, so now that uh, we just made this connection, it's done and completed, we're gonna go back up and we're gonna uh, mount the uh, bracket to the frame and then that'll be all done here all right so we're going to make that last connection which is right down here it's kind of hard to see let me get down here right this connection right here so 
So that's our last, very last connection point that we need to get to. So let's uh, go ahead and install that. All right, so that was the last connection point that we needed to make. So just uh, do a real quick once over to make sure that all your connection points are uh, locked in and it's not gonna move on you. Um, get all the um, all these connection points and then back there. Um, once that is all done and completed, let's go ahead and finish up the, uh, the remainder, which is the uh, installation of the cold air intake and hook up the rest of the lines. And then you can also put in your, your uh, insert for your grill again. All right, let's go ahead and install the uh, bottom part of your uh, air filter box. So let's go ahead and put this in first. And what you're going to do is you're going to install the uh, grommet on the bottom onto the uh, uh, motor mount first. Get that thing locked in place and then those two in there. And then what you're going to do is just uh, set it down. You're going to pop it in just like that. And then those two just slide back into the firewall. And then this one just locks straight down. So then when you get it locked in, push it down here, rock it back and forth, and there you go. So now that's uh, installed. All right, so go ahead and put your uh, air filter back on. Now we're going to put in our uh, cold air intake. All right, so when you're installing this, go ahead and install the, um, the cold air intake side down towards the uh, throttle body. So get that installed first and then go ahead and tighten up the, uh, the clamp here. All right, so go ahead and put the uh, band around the, uh, your hose here. Hook up your electrical connection. Make sure you get a positive lock. You'll hear it click. And that's a good positive lock. Now let's move on over here. Go ahead and put your bolt back in to hold it in place. And then we're going to go ahead and reconnect your three Phillips head screws. All right, so now that all is in, let's go ahead and hook up the mass airflow sensor electrical connection. You'll hear it click. And then you'll push down the, uh, the gray tab. It just push down and that actually locks in place too. And then this, you just take it, push it on, and it will click. And there it's on. All right, so the next thing that you're going to do is you're just going to uh, slide this back on and lock this back into place right here. And then uh, you have your uh, cold air intake uh, tube that goes here. So go ahead and hook that back into place. Okay, so now that the last thing that you need to do is put on your top uh, engine cover and then we're going to go ahead and hook up the uh, negative side of your battery terminals and this will also click into place. And then the only last thing that you're going to need to do is take it in, have it uh, recharged with uh, your uh, refrigerant or R134A. All right, so that completes your installation process on your uh, liquid line for your AC on a 2018 Jeep Renegade. The last thing that you need to do now is just get it charged. So just take it into your local shop to get your uh, refrigerant uh, installed because you bled the whole system dry. Um, and after that, you should have nice cold AC and I hope this video helped you out. Please uh, like, subscribe, and I've got a ton of videos on Jeep Renegade. So check those out and we'll see you on the next one.